In preparation for Muhammad's conquest of Mecca, there were three major obstacles for him and his army. The tribes of Najd, the tribe of Quraysh, and the Jewish city called Khaybar. He already had a 10-year peace treaty with the tribe of Quraysh, and next on his list was Khaybar. It was a strategic decision due to the fact that the Jews living in the city had a strong military presence. If he took out Khaybar first, then after defeating them, it would be easier for him and his army to conquer Mecca and soon after the whole of the Arabian Peninsula. Muhammad's army arrived at Khaybar and conquered them. Muslims until this day are very proud of this battle. After the defeat, the conquering army was given a feast by the survivors of the city. One of the wives of the leaders who was killed in the battle was making the food. What she did next will go down in history as one of the biggest documentable proofs from the Quran and the Hadith that Muhammad was a false prophet. But before we get into that, as the story goes, she poisoned the food. One Hadith of this account in Sunan Abi Dawood says, quote, a Jewess presented him at Khaybar with a roasted sheep which she had poisoned. The Messenger of Allah ate of it and the people also ate. So Muhammad sent for the Jewess and said to her, What motivated you to do the work you have done? She said, If you were a prophet, it would not harm you. But if you were a king, I should rid the people of you. The Messenger of Allah then ordered regarding her, and she was killed." Unquote. Muslim scholars agree that Muhammad died from this poisoning. هل مات رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم متأثرا بالصم؟ نعم. As a result of this poison, he felt a pain, and he felt the effects of this poison for the rest of his life, for the rest of his four years. He has now four years left to live for the rest of his life. So much so that on his deathbed, when he has a week left or a few days left, he will mention to Aisha that, O oh Aisha, I can still feel the effects of that poison from the Yehudiyah of Khaybar. I feel it in my heart arteries and I feel that now is the time the poison has finally reached my heart. Now, his death was written, but the poison was one of the causes that made that death more painful. He's still feeling, he says to Aisha, I can still feel the pain of that poison to this day. Some Muslim scholars, including the companion of Muhammad, Ibn Mas'ud, actually refer to Muhammad as a martyr because he died by this poison. الأبهر أبهر اللي هو الأورطة ده كأن السم أثر تأثيرا سلبيا في الشرايين من شدته لأنك تعيزا يموت يموت يعني فلم يمت مباشرة بذلك السم لكن قد يكون مات متأثرا بعد ثلاث سنوات بهذا السم Kata para ulama, Allah ingin Nabi SAW meninggal dengan cara mati syahid. Ya. Allah ingin Nabi SAW meninggal dengan kematian yang mulia, yaitu dengan mati syahid. Di antaranya dengan racun, racun tersebut. Racun tersebut, ya. Quote, Because Allah the Exalted pushed away the harm of the poison after he showed him the conspiracy against him with a miracle, which he manifested to him with the speech of the shoulder of the lamb. Then Allah protected him from its harm all his life until the time of his death drew near. So the poison prevailed over him. So he found its pain and Allah wanted martyrdom for him with that meal." Unquote. 
Okay, so Muhammad conquers Khaybar, has a feast, gets poisoned, and it eventually killed him. The rest of the hadith, cited from Sunan Abi Dawood earlier, goes, quote, He then said about the pain which he died, I continued to feel the pain from the morsel which I had eaten at Khaybar. This is the time when it has cut off my aorta. To quote another hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated by Aisha, quote, The Prophet in his ailment in which he died used to say, O oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. Aku masih merasakan rasa sakit akibat makan racun yang aku makan di Khaybar. Fahada awanun wajatun kata Abu Hurairah min dari kasum dan ini saatnya aku mendapati ya, urat-uratku akan terputus gara-gara racun tersebut. Ya. Jadi unquote. The Jewish woman who poisoned him said that if he was a false prophet, that this would kill him. And as we saw, Muhammad himself said that this is what killed him. Now Muslim scholars agree that he died from the poison. Some say that he was a martyr because of this. So who's correct? Was the Jewish lady who poisoned him correct that this would make him a false prophet? Or are the Muslim scholars who say that he's a martyr, correct? Let's examine the specific words Muhammad used when dying. He said, quote, I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison, unquote. What makes that so significant is that the Quran in chapter 69 verses 44 to 46 say that if Muhammad was a liar making things up, then he would be seized by his right hand and his aorta would be cut. That means that if Muhammad was a false prophet, then his aorta would be cut. That's exactly what Muhammad said happened to him on his deathbed. Muslims, how do you answer this question? The Jewish woman who poisoned Muhammad said that if he were a false prophet, that he would die from her poisoning. It turns out she's correctly in line with what the Quran says. Muhammad died from her poisoning and said that he felt as if his aorta was being cut. The exact death that the Quran says will happen to him if he is a lying, false prophet. How do you reconcile that? Until next time, Jesus is Lord and Muhammad died the death a false prophet would die according to his own 